Texas Governor Greg Abbott ordered the ban to apply to any state-controlled systems. That means Texas State students and faculty cannot use TikTok on campus if they use the university's Wi-Fi. Some students say they're confused and don't understand why the policy was implemented in the first place. I think it's weird because we're all above, most of us are at least 18 and up, which I think it's odd to try to mitigate what content that adults are using. Maybe for like university devices, I guess, sure, if you don't want it to be used. But for like personal use, I don't really understand it. Government officials say the main reason for the ban is to prevent cybersecurity risks posed by the Chinese government, which ultimately controls TikTok. Freshman Charlize Garza says she believes the ban is unnecessary. For the most part, nobody even really posts anything that would expose, like especially not um, college students posting things that would expose the U.S. government or stuff like that. Like, it's really not that big of a concern for them to be banning it. More universities are implementing the TikTok ban across the U.S. The TikTok CEO plans to testify in front of the U.S. Congress this coming March. With Bobcat Update, I'm Juan Mora. Bobcat Build offers an outlet for students to give back to the community. Volunteers help San Marcos residents enhance their home values. The turnout for this year's Bobcat Build was noticeably higher than previous years. I think it's very interesting that so many Texas Day students are willing to come out here on a Saturday morning and give back to the community. Um, so we have just so many groups. We even have individual people who sign up and then we send them the day of to a specific site. Bobcat Build welcomes volunteers. Several Texas State alumni and San Marcos Mayor Jane Houston participated this year. It was still inspiring to see that uh, you know Texas State students still uh, felt the uh, compassion to be able to go to you know the San Marcos community to give back. And I, I would say just overall, it, it felt amazing to see that you know students from 10 years ago, 20 years ago, still had that same drive to help the community. Volunteers help those in need and learn new skills, and they make new. Friends. Everybody that's part of the committee and like people that we had today, they're all cool. You can have a conversation with pretty much anybody. They'll tell you something about themselves. You get to learn something new about everybody. So it's like mainly everybody comes together and we can all just be like one big family. This is what Texas State is about. We help each other and we have a lot of differences and yet we come together in such an amazing way. Bringing so many different people from different clubs, different friend groups, just so we can accomplish and have an amazing day helping out other people in this community. With plenty of hardware and lots of eager volunteers, Bobcat Build aims to bring the San Marcos community closer together, one property at a time. For Bobcat Update, I'm Juan Mora. <laughs> Distracted driving has an impact, and those who get around on motorcycles are vulnerable. Philip Bain sells motorcycles and likes to ride himself. He says he relies on other drivers to take safety seriously. I certainly think that having a more bicycle-friendly city would in turn lend itself to a more vigilant public and kind of make it higher level of safety for everyone. San Marcos police officer Eric Charleswell says creating a safe travel space for motorcyclists is a necessity. I think the issues are education. Um, and, and, and some of the problems are coming from the riders as well. I, I don't want to put it all on four-wheel people. You got to look at it for experience for both the other drivers on the road and experience for the rider itself. We all have to work together. Wearing the proper safety gear and maintaining one's motorcycle can contribute to a safer ride. And all cyclists agree on one other precaution. Take a safety course. Take the course. The course is absolutely worth taking. There's new things that come up and things that you, you form habits. And sometimes it may, you know, you may have a bad habit that, that you form somewhere over the years and then it just, it's a good refresher to like, oh yeah, this is why we don't do this. The legal requirement that you take a course and get the endorsement on your license, not a bad law. Follow it. Um, take the course, learn, and take the more advanced course. It's also worth it. Share the road and pay attention. Those are words to live by for anyone who rides a motorcycle. For Bobcat Update, I'm Juan Mora. Training card games, there's just so many different aspects that you can appreciate for them. The camaraderie, the friends that you can make, it's just fun to collect. It's one of the biggest things that's a problem is people enjoy playing Magic or Pokemon or any of those given games 
and they don't show up for tournaments because they feel like they're not as good as the other players. Competitive in the wrong environment can destroy the player base. And there's definitely no casual without competitive, but there's no competitive without the casual. There are people, their intent is to min-max buying and selling cards like stocks. It's something that the parents enjoy the kids buying, you know, that they, they get a kick out of it. Just being able to build a deck and, and kind of have a mechanic expressed properly is, is where I get my most enjoyment out of it. Motivated, excited, driven, redeemed. These are emotions I feel right now being so close to graduation with a bachelor's degree from Texas State University. It wasn't always like that. In fact, I felt the exact opposite emotions almost nine years ago. It's 2014, and I just got academically suspended for the second time at Austin Community College. I felt defeated, depressed, stuck, and lonely. I remember not really giving any thought to my future. I just coasted through life without a drive to do anything. I just woke up, went to work, played video games, and slept. This was my routine for almost two whole years. I almost given up on college. In fact, I didn't want to go at all at one point. But my parents would always tell me that I was destined for greatness. I never really knew what that meant, but I knew I just had to get out of this routine. I had to try something new. I had to be better. So I decided to give college one more shot. I moved to San Antonio and decided to go after my associate's degree. This was my first goal and I wanted it. And what do you know? I was actually passing my classes. In fact, I was doing better than that. There was a point where I was almost getting all A's in a semester. And after a lot of time and a lot of dedication, I finally did it. I graduated with an associate's degree with a 3.47 GPA. But with that came more goals, more ambitions, and even more things that I wanted to accomplish. So my next goal was to get a bachelor's degree, but this time I wanted to try even harder. I ended up getting on the Dean's list not once, not twice, but three times. Something I would have never dreamed of in 2014. But here I am now, almost ready to graduate and work in the job that I love to death. My story isn't about the importance of college, but the importance of having goals. And if you want to reach those goals, then you need to keep moving forward.